Today, I'm gonna to teach you a really powerful data sufficiency trick that's gonna let you get any percent or ratio data sufficiency question right and do it really fast, do it really accurately, and do it really confidently. Also, just because you showed up here today, I have a free gift for you. Three simple strategies to raise your GMAT score 30 points today. These are the very same strategies I teach all of my private students, so I know they're really effective, they work immediately, and they're gonna help you out a lot, and best of all, they're free. You can download it right there in the description. Okay, let's dive into the data sufficiency. Okay, let's dive into the essential tips and tricks to get GMAT data sufficiency percent and ratio questions right every time. Now, these questions are really common. They'll ask you things like, what was the percent increase? Or what fraction of the total is X? Or what is the ratio of X to Y? The strategy I'm about to show you works on all of these types of questions. So the strategy here is deceptively simple. Anytime you're in a data sufficiency question that's asking you for a percent or a ratio, your job is very clear. You want to try and get all the variables to cross off. If you can, it means that the statement is sufficient. Let's see why that's true. So if we were just to take a ratio 14AB over 7B, notice that the Bs cross off, but we're left with the value of that ratio being 2A. We don't know the exact value of that ratio. That's insufficient. But if we have 14AB over 7AB, well, the ABs cross off and we're left with two. We know the exact value of that ratio. That is sufficient. Remember, on data sufficiency, you're only being asked if you have enough information to tell if you can get to an exact value. If all of the variables cross off in a ratio, then you have enough information to be able to tell the exact value of that ratio. Okay, let's take a look at an example, and I think this is going to be a lot clearer to you. Jamie is a soccer player. What was the percent increase in the number of goals Jamie scored from high school to college? First step is always to pick out what we've been asked to do and write it down. In this case, we're asked for a percent increase, which is new minus old over old, or in this case, college minus high school over high school, or C minus H over H. Remember our goal is to get all the variables to cross off. So the next step is we translate each statement out of English into math, plug it into our ratio, and see if it's enough information to get all the variables to cancel off. Statement one, she scored 43 goals in high school. In math, that means H equals 43. Is that gonna be enough information to get all of the variables to cancel off? Absolutely not. We have nothing on college at all. So we end up with C minus 43 over 43. That's insufficient. Number two, the number of goals she scored in high school was 40% more than the number she scored in junior high. And the number of goals she scored in college was 55% more than the number in junior high. Hmm. Well, what does that mean in math? It means this. It means H is 1.4J, and it also means C is 1.55J. We'll take those numbers, we'll substitute them into our ratio, we'll see if it's enough information to get all the variables to cancel off. So C minus H over H becomes 1.55J minus 1.4J over 1.4J. Okay, and then let's see what happens. We combine those, 0.15J over 1.4J. Hey, guess what's gonna happen? The Js are gonna cancel. That is sufficient. The answer is B, nicely done. I know what some of you are thinking. You said, hang on, we didn't solve down to the exact value of that ratio. That's exactly right. We don't have that kind of time. Remember, data sufficiency is only asking you if you have enough information to get to an exact value for that ratio. And we know we do if all the variables cross off, we don't have to calculate that exact value. So this business of crossing off all of the variables, use this strategy when you are solving for a percent ratio or fraction, get everything out of English and into math, then plug it back in to that ratio that you were given. If all the variables cancel, then the statement is sufficient. Okay, very nice job. Okay, great job. That's how it works. Don't forget about your free gift, three simple strategies to raise your GMAT score 30 points today. It's yours for free. I promise it's going to help you out a lot. And all you have to do is download it in the description. Okay, we'll see you next time.